Hello, everyone. Um, my presentation is going to be on inertial measurement units. Uh, sorry, I don't have a face cam right now. I lent it to my friend. But anyway, let's uh, dive right into this. So an inertial measurement unit is used to measure acceleration in six axes. The uh, So you can measure in X, Y, and Z and pitch, yaw, and roll. So X, Y, and Z is just like moving straight in your cardinal directions. And then pitch, yaw, and roll are rotational movements, um, such as you see here with the, the green, the orange, and the cyan. Um, yeah, so an IMU combines these two types of sensors into one to measure all different types of motion. Uh, so some of the uses for IMUs, um, one use is stabilization and also knowing like how fast you're going, what your angle is. Um, one uh, major use of this is in drones. Drone, uh, pretty much all drones have to use an IMU to stabilize themselves, know what angle they're at, know how fast they're going. I really like this image because the drone is um, is rotating in this direction but it knows its angle because it has this camera set at the horizontal so even though it's it's tilted either to fly in a direction or to fly against the wind it's maintaining a level camera and the drone can also use the IMU to maintain constant speed if it sees that its acceleration is zero so if it maintains constant speed which they are very good at doing it makes for some great uh, some great overhead footage, some great flyby footage. Um, so that's one use of IMU is in stabilization um, for drones, for example. Uh, another use is navigation. This is only useful for short-term navigation and is typically used in tandem with other um, navigation sensors like GPS um, because in order to get a position from acceleration you have to integrate twice which that can produce um, that can produce high uh, high uh, not high error but accumulating error um, which will increase over time um, this robot here is called the the jbot by Seattle Robotics Society and um, they managed to get their error down to 0.5 percent um, when incorporating this along with uh, wheel encoders to see how far it had gone. And of course, uh, you can also use um, IMUs in things like Wii remotes for motion controls in video games. The uh, Wii remote has an IMU in it. It can measure all the, the six axes of directions. And you can see here, um, this is a game that I used to play when I, a while back on the Nintendo Wii, where you would move this marble around by tilting the Wii remote and it would sense that and it would actually tilt the board and cause the marble to move around. Um, so that's another use of IMUs. So this this here is an older IMU. Um, it was used in the Apollo 11 spacecraft and uh, it's a mechanical IMU and it uses a stable mass and then from the rotations Around that stable mass, it produces an analog voltage, which can be read by a computer. Um, this tends to be an outdated design. They're not as accurate, and uh, they're larger than what we do now. Um, so now we use uh, MEMS IMUs. Uh, MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical System. Uh, micro because it's microscopic in size. Um, electromechanical because it looks at mechanical motion it measures mechanical motion and that's converted into an electrical signal. Um, so MEMS IMUs are the modern day implementation and they still have, uh, so they have the accelerometer and gyroscope separate, um, two different types of measurements here. And they use both of those to get the six axes of acceleration. And typically what they'll do is they'll have these uh, voltage signals produced by these two units and then they'll stack on a protective cap and then an IC to analyze the voltage signals. Um, in this case, they'll typically use what is called an ASIC, 
which is an application specific IC and that ASIC will uh, perform one function. It's like it's like a, a single computer program that is just stuck like that. It will and it can perform that really fast and really efficiency efficiently, but it only performs that one function. So they'll stack the IC on top, they'll connect the IC to the MEMS, um, and then they'll connect, they'll also connect the IC to the bottom of the chip. And the bottom of the chip can communicate with the printed circuit board through that connection. Uh, so typically you'll see these black chips on a circuit board. It They look, yeah, they're like this. And uh, the, uh, the typical ones nowadays are LGA package, which means pads on the bottom. And they can be as small as um, two by two millimeters, which is just like really, really tiny fits on the pad of your finger. Um, some of them are, are bigger, even modern day ones. Like there are some that are like hockey puck size. Um, and some of those aren't MEMS, but some of them are like a lot of MEMS, just a whole bunch of them to improve accuracy those tend to be like really expensive, like $1,800 is the minimum. Those are industry grade IMUs. Um, yeah, so here's a close up of uh, sort of the MEMS structure and an IMU structure. And that's a size comparison with the human hair. So these things are just really, really tiny. Um, and so the way they function, so this is a, how the accelerometer functions and it's used to measure X, Y, and Z acceleration. And what happens is you have this mass here and when your object accelerates, the mass will move because it's loosely connected to the rest of the object through these spring-like structures here. And when this object moves, the capacitance here will change because the distance between them changes that effectively changes the voltage. So as this moves to the right, for example, capacitance C2 will get higher and capacitance C1 will get lower. And this, this will actually effectively increase this voltage on this pin by a very tiny amount. Um, there's a good animation here at this video if you want to go to it. Um, and so gyroscopes are built similarly. Um, and are used to m measure rotational motion. They also use capacitance to determine their value. The difference with the gyroscope though, is that it has a driving direction, which means that when it, on a, even when it's stationary, a signal is being applied. So this thing bounces back and forth in this direction, um, straight line back and forth. But when there's an angular motion applied to it, it starts to rotate in a circular motion and that produces a more dynamic change in capacitance that can be analyzed. So these changes in capacitance um, can be analyzed with a, with a circuit like this. So you have the changing capacitances over here. You also have an input sine wave signal and uh, this produces a very tiny minute um, amplitude modulated signal. So it's like a sine wave um, whose amplitude is modified by another sine wave. And so the, these uh, differential signals go into a difference amplifier, which will expand out those tiny signals so that we can actually use them. And then a mixer will take out this internal sine wave and only give us the modulation um, frequency and then a low pass filter will remove any noise we have. And then the simple signal we have here can be used to determine the capacitance directly. So some of the types of packaging, there's a fold up design uh, that looks something like this. And essentially it'll consist of multiple pieces where they will stack CMOS wafers and uh, the gyroscope and accelerometer will be protected inside this cap. And then on top of the cap, the um, ASIC, the application specific IC will be placed on top, um, like I showed here. So this is the cap and the MEMS, um, and then later the IC will be placed on top. Um, so that's, that's how they do that. 
Um, they do it in pieces, and then they essentially wrap it up on itself. Um, I thought this one was kind of cool. It's more of a prototype. Um, it hasn't really been implemented yet as far as I know. And this is just a larger version of it. They haven't really gone small scale yet. But you have four different ICs, and then you fold it up, and then they lock together. So you get your accelerometer and your gyroscope, and uh, then you could have two other ICs here. And this structure interests me a lot. It seems like it would be pretty, uh, pretty stable, um, have a lot of structural integrity, etc. Um, inter I'm interested to see if they use this later on um, in other IC designs. So this is a specific um, IMU called the, the MAX 21105. It's made by Maxim Integrated. And it's a fairly new IMU. Um, it's specifically their title for it is a low power, ultra accurate, six degrees of freedom IMU. They also they always say ultra accurate, but of course, if you get bigger ones or more more fancy industry grade, it would be more accurate than this. But this uh, this chip. So here are the uh, the accelerator and uh, gyroscope over here. And then this is the ASIC that they stack on top of it, um, like specified earlier. And this one actually communicates via SPI or I squared C. And uh, that's a standard communication interface to speak with the microcontroller. Um, and so they pack, just a good idea, they pack all of this into three by three millimeters. And so that's like you have your slice of bread and you basically have like a breadcrumb sitting next to it. Like if you sneeze or breathe too hard, there goes your IC chip blowing away in the wind. These things are tiny. Um, so with all this stuff that they pack in there, they have the MEMS over here and then they have the, the gyro drive controls. So remember how we talked about how it moves back and forth on its own um, before anything is applied to it. So that's the drive control to make it move. Uh, and then you have the gyro sensor to measure the voltage changes. And then you have this sensor down here to measure the changes in acceleration. Um, that gets converted to a linearly changing voltage to represent linear changes in um, acceleration. And that's stored in a register, which can then be accessed via I squared C or SPI. Um, here is a, here's some supporting circuitry that's required to get this chip to work. Um, some pull-up resistors to bring these two uh, voltage lines up to a high voltage when they're idle. And some capacitors to ensure the chip maintains power. And then you have your uh, microcontroller over here, maybe an Arduino or a Nucleo board or something to communicate with it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Here is uh, a board that you can you can get um, that it's called a breakout board, and it has all the supporting circuitry to get the chip working. Um, this thing is like the size of a quarter. This whole thing is, um, and that's it. Um, here are my references. And yeah. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Uh, if you're watching this now, I'm on my way to Virginia. So wish us luck with that. We're going to be launching a, a rocket there, so that should be fun. Um, anyway, I had a great term with you all, and I hope you have a great summer.